What's going on everybody? Alpha Investment Group here today. I'm going to talk about interest rates. So for anybody that follows the news, you probably hear a lot about experts talking about interest rates. What are interest rates exactly? So I'm going to go over some basic ideas and concepts behind interest rates that I've learned during my degree in economics. There's two perceptions behind interest rates. One is by the borrower and one is by the lender. From the perception of the borrower, interest rates are the cost of borrowing. When interest rates are high, you have to pay more to borrow money. And when interest rates are low, you have to pay less to borrow money. From the perspective of the lender it's basically in reverse when interest rates are high lending your money is more profitable and when interest rates are low lending your money is less profitable the next question is who borrows money and the answer is everybody borrows money this means governments and businesses slash corporations and consumers the reason they borrow money is because they have decided at one point or another that it is more attractive to go into debt to engage in some type of activity rather than pay for this activity upfront in cash or they're unable to pay it upfront in cash such as a mortgage so there are two big contributors that change interest rates. One is the central bank through monetary policy, and two is supply and demand in a free market for loanable funds. So a central bank, such as the Federal Reserve or the ECB or the Bank of Canada, lends money directly to accredited financial institutions. This is called the overnight rate or the Fed, or the Fed funds rate. And what that is is simply a very, very low rate that they charge, and this eventually trickles down into the economy. A central bank engages in monetary policy and tries to control interest rates, kind of monitor the economy and make sure everything is in check. So in that case, a good way to think about it is a central bank kind of has its foot on the gas pedal and on the accelerator. Now, going back to the demand and supply for loanable funds within an economy. When the economy is in good condition and people are rather optimistic about the future, they tend to spend more money. They're not too worried about what things may come. And this makes sense if you were in a generally good level of employment, a stable level of employment, you may do things you wouldn't do before, such as buy a new house with a mortgage, borrow money for a car loan. At the same time, a business may open up more stores and a government may borrow more money. All these little activities on a macro scale, which means combined together, is the supply and demand for loanable funds. What you have to understand about interest rates is that it affects all components of an economy. It's very interconnected. You have to think about it like a spider web. So to start off, the interest rate affects the stock market. And the reason for this is interest is an expense on the income statement. When interest rates go up, a lot of outstanding debt that a company has becomes more expensive. And at the same time, the cost of issuing new debt becomes more expensive as well. All things equal, this tends to affect the profitability of a corporation and therefore the equities market as a whole, with the exception of financial institutions who profit off interest rates, most companies do not. And there's a lot of historical data to show that when interest rates do rise, the equities market's earnings go down. And so do its valuation. And then you have the bond market. Bonds are essentially just debt instruments that you invest in and receive interest in return. What's interesting about the bond market is it has inverse relationships with interest rates. So when interest rates go up, bonds go down. And when interest rates go down, bonds go up. The reason for this is when interest rates go up, new bonds have higher interest rates and therefore you get a better return on your investment. The older bonds are less valuable because they offer lower interest rates. Very simple. And the next thing you have is inflation. Inflation is an economic term that refers to the changes of pricing goods and services within an economy. So inflation can be a good thing or a bad thing. For example, when inflation is too high, the prices of goods and services are rising too much, usually outpacing people's wage growth. However, a certain level of inflation is good. So in that regard, central banks monitor inflation and use interest rates to curb inflation risk. Because interest rates change people's spending behavior, if inflation is considered to be going high, a central bank may rise interest rates to offset this. So often interest rates have an inverse relationship with inflation as well. High interest rates usually mean low inflation, however if interest rates are really really low, this could mean a high inflation period. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was currency. Currency is a very complex topic and there are a number of economic factors that influence the value of a currency. When you hold a currency, you're able to receive interest on that currency by buying government debt. You can only buy the government debt with that currency. So when interest rates are high within an economy, the currency tends to go up. And the reason for this is globally, people find it more desirable to hold that currency because of the interest rates it offers. This is assuming the interest rates in all other countries don't go up as well. So for example, if the Federal Reserve rise interest rates, US dollars will become more valuable. They will see that they can't get that interest rate within their own currency and within their own country or anywhere else in the world. And the reverse would be true. If interest rates were really low, currency may drop and depreciate as well. That's really all I have to say about this topic, guys. I think it's important to understand the relationship between interest rates and all other things. Keep in mind that these topics do get a lot more complex. I wanted to keep it simple. There's a lot of sources online if you want to learn more about how these relationships occur. It's also good to look at that from a graphical perspective to understand it better. So thanks for listening and I will see you guys later. Bye bye.